That's why I got these chairs for. I'm up now. You guys are on. All right, we'll make a couple of announcements. Anyway, we are New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. Pastor Randall Baker, glad to have everybody that came out, of course, and everybody on the video. Uh, the announcements for uh, uh, October 30th, uh, 2022 is uh, tomorrow, October 31, is the Fall Festival, 6 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. It says, please be here no later than 5.45 p.m. if you're volunteering, if you're volunteering. We'll probably need maybe some people a little earlier to have to set up, maybe or maybe not. But we are at 12th and Central in Newport, Kentucky. If you want to come down, we'll be glad to have you and your children. Thursday, November 17th is Thanksgiving dinner. It'll be at 6 p.m. also. And the menu sign-up is on the back table. There's also a volunteer sign-up for the Fall Festival, if you're willing to do that. Uh, the Brighton Center Christmas bags will be due December 4th. The information is on the back table. I think you've got a card that you can fill out to tell you if, you're going to, if whatever's in there is for a boy or a girl in the ages as well. Is that correct? And then what, what kind of things they want, I guess, is on the list, possibly, what they want to put in there. Sunday, December 18th, is the Christmas play. We need a volunteer to coordinate this year's play. Who wants to be the volunteer? Who wants to be the, the play director? We ain't got too many takers. No, don't everybody jump at one time. Yeah, we got too many takers. We need somebody, somebody step up and do that. What? We're gonna have to now listen, we might have to appoint somebody to be that if Sarah Ruth. We might have to volunteer somebody to do that. It says here a reminder, the floor donations are right about halfway, so thanks for your continued support. Progress is being made on the parking lot as well. We'll talk about that just a little bit more when we start to take up uh, the offering. But uh, you got a song there? What do you yeah, got? Yes, we do. Let's do a 332, The Sweet By and By. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one for this morning. I'm telling you, it's, uh, that, is, that is exciting, though, man. We've, uh, we've accomplished a lot, and it's a fun time. You know, it's, it's good to be busy uh, around church, ain't it? It really is, man. That's... Uh, that's good to hear. The, the floor, I, I walked down there again, man. I can't believe how nice that looks. It, it really was a, a vast improvement, guys. Thank you for your uh, support on that project. And Jared said that was coming along real nice as far as the funding, so. If you haven't seen the floor, go down and take a look at it if you can. Absolutely. You, you need to really check that out. It's, uh, it's really pretty. It, it really did. It really helped. It. And of course, that parking lot was a great improvement. I think, I think we'd have lost chunks of that if we hadn't sealed that. So uh, it was really getting to a, a bad state. But anyway, it's, it's exciting, man, to keep up the church. I, I think it is, you know. And, I, and like I said, I know Brother Phil Skipper the last time here. He was here, he told me, he said, man, you guys have really been busy. He said, I can tell, he said, that's the best this place has looked. So I, I thought that was a, a high compliment, you know. But anyway, thank you all for uh, the help, the support, and, and hey, for your prayers for it, huh? As well. 332. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that.
shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore amen It'll be a beautiful day, I think. It'll be a great day. So we will be able to meet on that beautiful shore where everything will be perfect, where everything will be great. There'll be no more grief, no more uh, sickness, no more uh, sorrow, and, and above all, no more death. We won't have to worry about those kinds of things. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about some sickness and stuff right now, and there's plenty that are sick and in need, and uh, you know, we need to we need to keep them in prayer. We need to we pray for each other. I, I think that uh, you know I'm only here today because of prayer, because of, of, of God's mercy and the prayers that were made to Him. Well, and, and other people here, I'm sure, can say that. Amen. I'm certain of it. We do have some people that uh, have, have asked us to pray for them and keep them in prayer because uh, you know they believe in prayer, like we ought to believe in prayer. If you don't believe in prayer, there's no reason to do it, is there? None, none whatsoever. Uh, uh, Larry Griffin is going to have neck surgery on this Thursday. And then after that heals, he's going to have back surgery sometime after that. His grandson has an ear infection and uh, was throwing up and stuff this morning, so he wasn't able to come and bring him. Uh, uh, Roger Bear, who used to preach here sometimes, is, uh, I think he said his daughter or granddaughter said he has kidney cancer, I believe. So keep him in your prayer. Uh, my sister Sylvia. Pray for her, but her ex-husband Jim Reese has a pancreatic, pancreatic cancer, and her grandson Dylan has, a, I believe he's got a melanoma that probably has spread some, and uh, and uh, they said they thought they could, uh, you know, handle his pretty good, that his wouldn't be too uh, too difficult to keep under control. Uh, but keep them in your prayers. Keep them all in your prayers. I, if I'm missing anybody, if anybody told me to pray for them, I'm sorry that I can't remember. But uh, uh, Sandra Lynn, uh, Liz Turner's daughter-in-law's mother just passed away. And then uh, Robert Seed's wife, Callie, uh, mother just passed away. That's uh, Charlie Stidham's wife. She just passed away as well. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, the lost and done, Pam and her mother. And uh, Stephanie's whole family was sick last week. They all went back to work, but they still all never 100%. Well, a lot of sickness going on. I think this is the season, isn't it? Remember for, uh, Preston. Preston has a lot of heat. He had a breathing issue at school the other day again. Dexter's grandson, Preston, has, uh, what's he got? What's he got? Psoriasis or eczema, one or the other. And he's got, uh, and he's got uh, asthma. asthma that affects him sometimes. And uh, that's bad when you can't breathe. That's bad. Anybody else got a prayer? Sandy's uh, daughter had a stroke. Oh, you, I remember you saying that last week. She's a young woman. She's 15-something years old. Uh, is it like a transient stroke or is it, uh, how she, bad is it? She had it pretty bad. She was in critical condition for a couple of days. Okay, and her. her granddaughter is uh, really sick too. She's got some problems. Keep keep them in your prayer. Keep sending your family. Send your son prayer and I need prayer. We'll be in prayer. Okay. And my daughter Jenny needs prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Geneva? My prayer list and my family. Yes, ma'am. And Nancy Combs is getting out of the hospital today. Okay. Nancy Combs, that reminds me also, pray for Lucy Mays, uh, you know, and their family going through a lot of uh, tough things, and, and Lucy herself has got some issues. Yeah, Herschel? Yeah, I pray for my uh, son, Jeff. He got to go on kidney dialysis. Oh, my, okay. Yeah, keep him in prayer for sure. Yeah, Terry. Remember Skipper had some good news. You can tell him. Yeah, uh, you know Phil Skipper. Uh, I guess uh, the doctor said that he he went to the doctor and they uh, uh, <coughs> X-rayed his lungs, and they said there was uh, quite a bit of improvement in, in one of his lungs in that. Uh, and he said he, you know he's doing doing something better, doing quite a bit better. Uh, he was kind of sick though. He went to the doctor because he was feeling kind of sick, but uh, but then they uh, got some uh, fairly good news. Uh, you know that he is at least improving. Is doing is doing well, and his uh, his uh, uh, wife Barb had her toe operated on. He said that it seems to be doing pretty good as well. And that's all I can remember. Is that exactly right? Or not? well, yeah. They, well, he said that he's 
able to stand and preach, but he's Oh, that's right. He did say, yeah, he said his, uh, his, his lung capacity, I guess, has improved some, and he's able to breathe a little better where he can stand up. His legs are in bad shape. Keep filling your prayers, because his knees are in, in terrible shape. Uh, you know, as we get older, we get aches and pains and stuff like that, but if you already got an issue on top of that. Yes, Kim? Uh, my cousin in Alabama had put a post on Facebook. A real good friend of theirs, daughter, was in a horrible car accident. She's oh. 27. I wish I would have wrote her name down, but their ask is that it all, anyone going to church would have the churches pray for their daughter. She did wake up. They said there's no brain damage, luckily, but there's concern now whether she'll walk or not. Wow. That's terrible, isn't it? Those cars are not something and she to play with. Evidently hit by somebody. It didn't sound like it was a drunk driver. Just a truck hit her head on, but just a freak mm -hmm. accident. Not wow. I mean, in the middle of the day. She was, you know. That's terrible. Keep her in prayer for sure. Yeah, buddy. Uh, me and my family. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Me and my family. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Mitchell. My wife. Feeling bad. Man has been struggling a lot lately. Uh, yeah, keep her in the prayers for sure. And you're going to take her to the doctor for dizziness now. If I can get her to go. If you can get her to go. <laughs> Somebody suggested tell her you're taking her shopping. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Dave, do you have your hand up? Remember our nation. Absolutely, yeah. Remember our, our country and our nation. The world. The whole world's having trouble, aren't they? Uh, everywhere. People have trouble all over the place. But you know what, if you read your Bible, you'll find out that uh, things are going to get worse and worse. Uh, before it gets better, and one of the only thing that will ever make it better is when God will destroy it. That's the only thing that will be good. The curse then will be lifted. Anybody else? Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Anybody here got a silent request on their heart? Because God does know your heart. He knows what we stand in need of, but He does still ask us to, to pray for Him. He says we have not because we ask not. And that's not asking me or anybody else. That's asking God uh, for, you know, that God, God is the only one that can answer prayers. And uh, thank God that he is able to do that. Let's go ahead and have any man that will come on up. We'll gather around here and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. church here, Father, for the next hour or so. Father, just let's go to church seven days a week, not just on Sunday. Yeah, Help us in all we say and do, Father. Forget <coughs> all us, it's not for us today. Father, all the prayer requests and, and thanks you heard today, Father, we just ask you if it be your will to act upon them in your good time and in your good will. Father, our country is in a terrible state. We just ask you this upcoming election. Uh, that you'll put some responsible people in those positions, Father. Amen. That can work with this, um, these abortion issues and all these amendments right. against, Father. We just ask you to, to send down your big hand, your big caring hand on that, Father, and let your will be done. We just ask you, Father, to bless our church, bless all the officers therein. And Father, if it be your will, bless Randall as he comes to the stands, Father, Father that may... Father, if just one person hears you here today or on these on this media outreaches and receives you, Father, it's worth every minute spent here. We just uh, ask you to love us, watch over us. We ask you to watch over the wills, the orphans, the old the people, the young and afflicted, the sick and shut in, just Father, everyone. And Father, the people that couldn't make it today, we ask you to bless and watch over them. And also all of the evangelists and all the people, Father, out teaching your word of it. Just all over the world, Father, we ask you to bless them. We ask you to bless all the Bible-believing and Bible-teaching churches today, Father. Yeah. Send down your good hand on them, Father. Give them a good lesson to feed their flocks. We again ask you to, to bless us in each, in each of our personal lives, Father. We, you know all, of our, all we stand in need of. You know all we need help. We just ask you, all of these <coughs> 
prayers. And as last week you've heard today, we just ask you, just to ask in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And amen and amen. 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 <laughs> All right, I would like to remind you that you're what's on the video that you can send in your gift offering, whatever you'd like to send in for the church, the run of the church, the building fund, either one of the projects, the parking lot, the floor, the ladies' club, the missions, the Sunday school, whatever you'd like to send it in for, send it in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. If you're able to, go ahead and stand up. If you're not, you can remain. You can remain seated if you don't feel like you can get up. We're going to have uh, uh, a couple of these guys take up some offering. As, as God tells you to give, give, and we'll bless you for it. What song you got there? A uh, Higher Ground, 77. 77, Higher Ground. Let's do number 77. We've got to keep pressing on, don't we? I know that kind of gets depressing sometimes when we watch the news, but uh, you know, hey, you're a Christian, guys. You've got a lot to look forward to. You've got better days to come. Better days by far. So don't ever forget that. That's for sure. We have to go through it, but we don't have to be up there. That's for sure. Hey, we have to go through it. You don't have to join in with it. Absolutely. So keep pressing on to that mark of the high call. Philippians 3.14. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on
Straight high mountain. If you got one of those blue books, you probably know the words of this song anyway. A lot of us do, I'm sure. Once I stood at the foot of a great high mountain, which I wanted so much to climb. For on top of this mountain was a beautiful fountain, which flowed with the waters of life. I fell down on my knees at the foot of this mountain and I cried, Lord, what must I do to climb this mountain and to drink from this fountain which I have now in view. Then I heard from the top of this mountain saying child put your hand in mine start climbing slowly watch your step on the ledge and take one step at a time so I started climbing slowly just one step at a time the higher i got the harder i climbed i'm still climbing upward and my journey's almost through i'm nearing the top and you ought to see the view oh the water is flowing freely there's enough to make you free so friends if you're thirsty climb this mountain with me that's a great old song yes and yet uh, it reminds me so much as some of those do of the old folks in the church here and uh some of them they used to sing it uh uncle buck and uh boy brother ca and, you know, it just makes me uh, miss miss them and long for the old days sometimes, you know, as, as a lot of us do. But there were some good things about the old days, and there were some bad things about the old days. They weren't always the good old days, or they? Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, thank God for the time he's given us and the folks he's put around us and, uh, and given us the church to be in. Thank God for all that. Today's uh, uh, offering was $396. May the Lord richly bless you for that and repay you threefold. As I mentioned in Sunday school, we support a uh, missionary, uh, actually he's an evangelist in, uh, in the Philippines named Ramon Villanueva. And he is uh, going to be here next week. He's going to be here and preach for us next week. And I'm glad to see him. He's a, he's a good friend of the church. And uh, it's been five years since he's been here. And uh, uh, you know, I'll be glad to see him again. He wanted to bring his wife and children with him this time, but uh, uh, the uh, traveling restrictions because of COVID that are still on, he wasn't able to do that. Uh, so maybe next time he comes, he can bring his wife. I know, uh, I don't remember what her name is, but one, this little girl's name is him. I remember that uh, uh, <laughs> when he had, had that child, when they had that child, they named her him. I thought that was a really pretty little name uh, for a little girl. But anyway, we will have him next week. He's uh, the one that said... Uh, America's a land of milk and chickens. Milk and chicken, yeah. <laughs> milk and chicken. You know, in a, in, a, in a country where you don't get enough to eat, in a country where things are hard to come by, you know, that seems like a big deal, don't it? Yes, sir. That seems like a big deal. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, did I mention, uh, I mentioned there that we will have the, uh, uh, the uh, fall festival here tomorrow, beginning at 6 o'clock. And, uh, you know, bring, bring any, any children you can, your, your uh, grandchildren, encourage them to come. They don't have to be a member of the church to come. Uh, your neighbors, if they're, if they're allowed to come, bring, bring some of them children. But let's try to make it uh, into a good time. We will, uh, of course, set a uh, table up in the uh, back, and Buddy and uh, Mark and uh, Mitchell, I guess, are going to, or, or anyway, they're going to work here at it. You guys are going to be at that table handing out uh, tracks and candy to trigger treaters that come by. And you're going to try to get your brother Gene, I guess, to come down with you. Hopefully, he'll come down and help out. 
but if you're able to come down and you can volunteer to come down and help in the basement, be a part of stuff. If you're a part of stuff in the church, you'll feel more like a part of the church. You'll, you'll, you'll get blessings from it. You know, that's what I'm saying when we're singing here. Sing with the church. You'll feel more part of the church when you do that stuff. When you participate in the service, it becomes more important to you. Now, one of you guys got another song you want to sing? We got time. I'll do one. Right, well, come on up then. Don't be shy. Come on. I never had that. Oh, <laughs> no, just kidding. Cameron, you got a song you want to sing when he gets done? Or you want to come up and help him with this one? <laughs> Don't embarrass him. Man. I'm just kidding, my buddy. He's one of my best buddies, Cameron is. He's running off. Oh, I'm running off. He'll be staying on that with you on Friday night instead of Saturday night. <laughs> Maybe. Well, he did stay on that with me Friday night and Saturday night. Okay. He was talking about, Randall was talking about the old people we miss here. And uh, somebody we just lost recently, of course, was Truman Turner. Man, he, it's, it's hard to look back there and not see him sitting there now. It's sad. And he asked me uh, a year or so ago to try to learn this song. He said he used to hear his, 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 either his dad or his grandpa he used to sing it. I can't ever remember. But it's called God's Unchanging Hand. Time is filled with sweet transition. Not of earth on move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. If my earthly friends forsaken Still more closely to Him cling Hold to His hand God's unchanging hand Hold to His hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand When your journey is completed If to God you have been true Fair and bright the home in glory Your enraptured soul will view Hold to His hand God's unchanging hand Hold to His hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, Forever. Amen. All right. Turn your Bibles then to uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. The Bible's a pretty big book. Got a lot of words in it. Got a whole bunch of things in it. The word will. The word will is in the Bible uh, quite a few times. Over 4,000 times as a matter of fact. Uh, that's a lot. In some form or another, it's in there for that. Uh, mostly in just the word will. And in everyday use, we, we use that. We use it countless times. Will, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We use that all the time. But you know, when we say we're going to do this or we're going to do that, uh, you know, we will do this, we will do that. We should say this like James tells us in James 4.15. For what we ought to say, if the Lord will, if the Lord will, we shall live. And do this or do that. So we should say, if the Lord will, we will. You know, if it's God's will, then we will. If it's God's will, we can do stuff. If it's not His will, we can't. 
Now that that's in that within that uh, uh, quote that we used, uh, we used the, the word will in, in seemingly two different forms. But I think I think actually that's the same because when you think about what the word will means, I will do this. You're kind of saying like it's my will that I will do that. It's my desire. It's my option that I'll do that because we can't always do it when we say we're going uh, we're going to do it. Sometimes people say they will do stuff and they don't do it. Sometimes there's a reason they can't, you know, a, a good reason they can't, a legitimate reason. And sometimes people say they'll do stuff without any intention really of doing it at all. And a good example of that is this. In the Bible, in the Bible here, J Jesus Christ was talking in Matthew 28, and he told the story of a father that had a vineyard, and he sent his two sons out to work in that vineyard. He sent both of them out, and, and the one said, uh, no, I'm not going. He said, I will not. But afterwards, the Bible says he repented and went. And then the other one said, I go, sir. But he went not. He didn't go. He didn't go at all. And then Jesus asked the question at the end of that. He said, which of the twain, or whether of the twain, did the will of the Father? And of course, it was the first one. He did the will of the Father by going. He first said he wasn't going to, but he did go. He did the will of the Father. And you know, man's not always trustworthy. He's not always trustworthy. You can't always depend on man, but God is always true. Then God is always faithful. He's faithful and true. The Bible says that he is, and I believe that he is. Now, uh, the name of my sermon today is, I will, I can, and I did. But God says, you know, in the Bible it says a lot of times that God says, I will. God says, I will, and when God says, I will, you can count on it. Matter of fact, the Bible says, view it as it's already happened. Because when God says it, it's going to happen, no matter what we say or what we think about it. The first time that that's used, that the word will is used in Genesis 2.18. And that's after God had made Adam. And you know, he made Adam from the dust and breathed into, into his body the, the breath of life, made him a living soul. And after he did that, he, made, he, made, well, he had already made all the animals. He'd already made a mate for all the animals. And then he made Adam. And then, and then God says this. Uh, it's not good that man should be alone. And he said this, I will, I will make him and help me for him. We know then, from the reading of the Bible in Genesis, we know then that God did create him a help man. He created Eve. He created Eve and, uh, and, and, uh, and he made that from Adam's rib. He made her from Adam's rib. We know that. And, and you know, the Bible says, God said, I will. And you know, God did. When God says, I will, God does. He does what he says he's going to do. In Genesis 17, 8, where I told you to turn, God makes two promises to Abraham, to Father Abraham in there. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, it says this. And I will give unto thee, he's talking to Abraham, and unto thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And then we can also read this next statement in Genesis, I mean, in Revelation says this, and I will be their God. Yes, That's a pretty darn good promise. Yes, sir. That's a good promise there, folks. Uh, go ahead, turn on over to Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, 19. Matthew 4, 19. God the Son, we know of Jesus Christ, of course, in the New Testament, also said he will do things. He also said there's a lot of things he'll do, and he, and he did them. He did them without fail. One time that we can read the Bible where Jesus saw a leper. He came in and he saw a leper there and, and, that, and that leper had come to worship Jesus Christ. He had come to worship him. And the man said to Jesus, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. If thou wilt, and that's a form of will, of course, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, uh, the Bible says that Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will. I will be thou clean. Uh, and the Bible says this, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately it was. God said, uh, uh, Jesus said, I will, and he did. When Jesus, when Jesus Christ chose his disciples, he went out and went to different areas and different places around uh, Israel, and he chose them. He didn't choose them because they were the strongest. He didn't cho choose them because they were the prettiest uh, or, or, or the, the smartest or even the richest. I don't even know if they were big and strong. He doesn't even say that, does he? All he did, all, all, all that we know that he chose them was because they believed in him and that they would serve him and they wanted to serve him. One of the guys was a tax collector. The Bible calls him a publican. And they said they were hated of the people. Uh, one, of them, one of them was a, a, a physician. Luke was the beloved physician. He was a doctor. But four of them, four of them were commercial fishermen. 
And, I, and brother, brother Dave used to talk about that sometime, old rough fishermen, you know, old smelly, old dirty rough fishermen out, out in the sea and, and working every day on the sun and everything. And in Matthew chapter 4 here, where we turn to, it tells that, uh, you know, when Jesus come to talk to some of them and to call and talks about what he told uh, Peter and Andrew that he would make of them, that he would make of them in uh, Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 19, or in verse 19, it says this, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He says, I will make you fishers of men. Turn on over to Mark uh, chapter 10, verse 26. Mark 10, 26. Jesus did make them fishers of men. We know that. Uh, three of the four of them stayed with him all his ministry, and they were with him all the time, uh, just about. And one of them, Peter, became a great, great man of God, the Bible says. The Bible tells us one time when he was out uh, preaching that thousands came to repentance because of him. Thousands came to Jesus Christ because of him. Just hearing his sermon. After Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, before he ascended back to heaven, to sit on the right hand of the Father in heaven, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. And again he says, I will send you another comforter. And we know that he did send us the Holy Ghost, don't we? He sent us the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to guide us in all righteousness. When Jesus spoke, the Bible says this, when Jesus spoke, it wasn't as the scribes. But it says that he spoke as one having authority. John 7, 46 says this, And the officers, officers answered, Never man spake like this man. That's right. You know, Jesus spoke with authority. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Absolutely. When he spoke with authority, because he knew what the outcome of everything would be. You know, we say things not knowing what the outcome exactly is going to be, but when Jesus said something, he knew what was going to be the outcome of that. He knew of every situation. He didn't have to guess like we do sometimes at what might happen. He already knew the future. He already knew the past, and he knows, knows the present. Uh, God says this, I will. He, he can say this. He can say, I will, because he knows that he can do all things. I will do it, and I know I can do it. Uh, Jesus Christ says that when Jesus told his disciples, and he told them this statement, it's a very familiar and very famous statement, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle uh, than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. He told his disciples that. You know what to say that it shocked them a little bit to be an under, understatement because the Bible says they were astonished uh, without measure or, about, or out of measure. Mark 10, 26, Mark 10, 26 and 27 says this, And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Who can be saved? And uh, Jesus looking upon them, saying, With men is, is impossible, but with God, or but, yeah, with God, for with God all things, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. So they ask, and we're talking about can now, but they ask, you know, who can then? Who can be saved? And, and uh, you know, man can't save people, can he? Man cannot. Go over and turn over your Bibles a couple pages over to Mark 2, 7. Man can't, but God can. The Bible makes that clear. God can, there's lots of things man can't do, but God can, God can do. Man can't create something from nothing, but God can, and he did. Uh, man can't send man's soul to hell, but God can. Man can't judge. We're not supposed to judge. But God can. God can do that because He is the righteous judge. He knows the intents of our hearts. He searches our minds and hearts, the Bible says. We can't hide anything from God. We never can. Uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy talks about things that only God has or can do and that, uh, that no man can even attain to do these things. 1 Timothy uh, 6.16 says, Who only has immortality? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. It don't come to a shock to any of us. You know, if you've read the Bible, you've ever heard a preacher preach, it don't come to a shock to you that we're all sinners and come short of the glory of God. We all know that. We can understand that. Not, not only us, but we all of humanity, all of humanity are lost and bound for hell without intervention, intervention from Jesus Christ. We know that. Uh, you know, without that intervention, we will all spend an eternity in hell, in torment, in the lake of fire, because of, but because Jesus was uh, sinless, because he was sinless, uh, we can, by believing in his death, in his 
birth, birth, well, his birth, his death, his resurrection. Uh, we won't have to spend uh, eternity in that everlasting punishment that we deserve to have because of what he did. Because of the shed blood of Jesus and on the cross of Calvary, our sins are atoned, the Bible says. Amen. Because of that and only because of that. Not right. nothing, anything good we can yeah. ever do or have done. Uh, Isaiah uh, 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like as wool. One time Jesus healed a guy. One time he healed this person. And he said to him, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the Bible says, But there were certain men of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts. So they were trying to say, No. You know, what's this guy saying? What's he, what's he saying here? And then Mark 2, Mark 2, verse 17, verse 7, Mark 2, uh, verse 7 uh, through 12 says this. Why does, and this is what these guys are thinking. They says, why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God? Oh, man, immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy, up my, thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He, that, that, uh, rather, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way in thy house. And immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they all that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Go ahead and turn back over to Genesis chapter eleven, verse nine. Genesis eleven nine. Genesis eleven nine. Wait, I got the wrong one here. Genesis 11, 9. Only God can forgive sins. We, we know that. Only God can forgive sins. But you know what? They, they were right about that. But what they didn't know, they didn't understand that Jesus Christ was God. The Bible says that he was Emmanuel when he was here on earth. God with us. You know, as incredible as the forgiveness of sin is and the, and the ability to go to heaven as incredible that is that's only one of the things that God can do God can do lots of things he's bigger he's stronger he's smarter and more capable than any human any angel any devil or Satan any of them he, he's more capable than any of them any miracle that's ever been or, or ever will be performed was either by God or ordained and permitted by God but Satan don't have any power on his own to do any of that even the devil and his angels are, are uh, subject to God's supremacy. We can read this. We can, we can look in the Bible. We can see that after the great flood in Noah's day, the descendants of Noah, his sons, the descendants of his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they began to spread themselves abroad on the earth as God wanted them to do. God commanded to do that. Be, uh, you know, he told them to be the fruitful, multiply, and he told them to spread out all over the earth. He wanted them to cover the whole face of the earth. He wanted them to do that. But the Bible talks about the seed of Shem at one time. They decided they wanted to make a name for themselves, and they wanted to stay together. The Bible says that at this time, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And they said this, the people of Shem said this, let us... They said, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And this is how Bible said they use slime, which is, which is a tar kind of a thing, for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And of course, God knew what they were doing, didn't he? He knew what they were thinking. He knew what they were going to do. He knew why they were doing it. He knew the reasons they were going to do it. And God said that he was going to go. He said, let's go down. <coughs> pardon me. Let's go down and confound their language uh, that they may not understand one another's speech. And God did. God did exactly as he said he was going to do. Genesis chapter 11, verse 9. Genesis 11, 9 says, uh, therefore is the name of it called Babel, talking about the city and the tower. Uh, therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. 
And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. You know, if you don't do what God tells you to do, sometimes he can force you to do it. He made them do it. He, he, took, he took steps to make them do it. Turn on over to Exodus chapter 9, verse 6. Exodus 9, 6. Uh, God said it and God did it. The Lord said, I will. The Lord can and the Lord did. Uh, when Israel were slaves in Egypt... God sent Moses to deliver them out of the hand of Pharaoh and into in the land, the Bible says, that flowed with milk and honey. When Moses went to Pharaoh to tell him that God said, let my son Israel go, the Bible says that Pharaoh refused to do that. God then had Moses do signs and wonders before Pharaoh himself, but Pharaoh brought in some magicians, Jannies and Jambres, and they were able also to do those, some of those things, those signs that he did, they were able to do some of them, so Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he still wouldn't let the people go, he wouldn't release them. So God sent plagues, the first thing he sent was a plague of blood, and that, pl uh, that plague of blood uh, covered all the waters, and there was no water to drink, the Bible said they had to go and dig around the river trying to find water to drink. He cut off all the water. The Pharaoh still refused to let him go. So God sent more plagues. He sent a plague of frogs. And then he sent a plague of lice. And then a plague of flies. But the Bible says that still Pharaoh refused to let Israel go. So God told Moses, he said to him, he said, Tell Pharaoh that he would put his hand against the cattle that are in the field. He said he talked about the horses. He talked about the asses, the camels upon the oxen and upon the sheep. And the Bible said that he would, there would be a very grievous moraine. Now moraine is an extremely infectious disease that would spread through and kill them. The animals are out in the field of the Egyptians, the Bible said, would be killed. But then he said he would make a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites and the, children, and the, and the animals of the Israelites would be spared. Uh, the Bible says this, and the Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And now we're going to see in Exodus chapter 9, uh, verse 6, that God did exactly that. It says this, uh, Exodus 9, 6, And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died, but all of the cattle of the children of Israel died, not one. God's a great God. He's able to do all things. He's a great God. He knows everything. He sees all things, and He can do all things. Uh, turn over in your Bibles, as we normally do, to uh, Romans to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. You guys can come on up if you want to. But uh, Jesus Christ said this in, in John chapter 14. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And he also said this at that time. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter. Jesus said in John 6, the bread that I will give is my flesh that I will give for the life of the world. God said, I will. God said, I can. God's not bragging when he says stuff. Sometimes we brag about stuff and it ain't even true. You know, I remember my son used to say, think I could beat everybody in the world up. And I know it wasn't true that I could beat hardly anybody up. So sometimes we brag about things. But when God says, I can, God can. He's able. He's able to do all things. So when God said, I will, God said, I can, because he's able to do all things. And God said, I did. When God said he would do something, he did it. It wasn't just an idle threat. Because you know why? God controls all things. God created all things. He has control over every single thing, every bit of matter. Now, if you're lost, if you're if you're lost, if you're if you are lost, if you're not saved right now, you know the, the things I was talking about there may not mean too much to you. But if you're saved, that was three good reasons to give God all the glory, all the God glory, because God said, "I will do this." He said, "I'll be your God." Thank God that He did. Amen. He said, "I can." And he can because he's able to do all things. We pray to him because he is able to heal if he so desires to do, if it's within his will. And he said, I did. Because when the Bible, when he said he would do something, he did it. He did it. So that's a good reason to say he was, uh, that, that you give him all the glory. He said, I will save you. He said, I will save you. I'll save you by grace through faith. He said, I will do that. He said he can save you. He is able to do that. He's, he's able to do that. You, you know what? And if you follow what we're, what we're looking, getting ready to look, like, right, look at right now in Romans, if you can, if you did follow that, then he did save you. Yeah. 
He did. If you do what it says, he did save you. Uh, if you're not saved now, if you're not saved, if you're not believing, he's still waiting for you. You can be. He still can save you. You know, he said, he said, I will. He said, I can. And he did save you if you if you believe. But if you haven't believed yet, just go to him and tell him you do believe. If you do believe, you have to believe first. That has to be the thing you have to do. Amen. I can't believe for you. Nobody else, mom and dad can't believe for you. You know, he can pray for you. Call, pray for you, and that means a lot. That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, 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 something that we need done. As many good Christians can pray for me, please do it. Absolutely, you know God is a great God, and God does answer the prayers. If you know if we if we do it all in the right vein, the the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, so you know you 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 there is a reason to pray. There is a there is a reason to, to support your brothers and sisters. There is a yes, reason sir. to bear one another's burdens. The God the God says that yes, we should sir. do that. We should do what God tells us to do. He don't tell you. He don't just speak to hear himself his own voice. He, he means what he says. He can do what he promises. And he is a good and great, perfect God. I will, I can, and I did. So if you're not saved, let today be the day of your salvation. Go to God and tell him. Tell him, I'm, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And tell him that, hey, uh, you know, I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's go ahead and read here in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says this, if that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, that's important, it's going to be heart salvation. For with the heart, man believeth. And that's the key you're going to find through the whole thing. Man believeth. Man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can't forget any of the other. You know, it all goes in the right way. It all, it all connects in together. You can't leave any of it out. All has to be done. First of all, you've got you to believe it. You've got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You've got to believe that He is Lord, that He is the Lord of all things, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. You've got to believe that. It says this in, in uh, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Not might be saved, not could possibly be saved, not saved in a week or two after you do that, not saved in a, in a second after you do that, but immediately. When you do it, when you believe, when you tell God that you believe, that's when it happens. That's when you're saved. You can go ahead and stand up if you like, and we're going to sing uh, this song of invitation. And uh, if God has spoken to you, come on up, and we'll be glad to take you and show you, if you need further showing of the Bible, what, how it is that you be saved. Maybe we can go to Acts, and we can show you where God said that uh, when, they, when, they, when he uh, uh, brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? He said, Believe in Jesus Christ. That's what you got to do. Yep. Absolutely. That's, Great all. that's what, and that's all you got to do. So, so just believe in Him. You know, if you come to church... You ought to come to church because you believe in God, because you believe in Sunday school, or not Sunday school, because you believe in Jesus Christ. You come to Sunday school, you might learn a few things, or, or you might be able to teach somebody something. Absolutely. You can't do it. You know, just do that. Come, come as, Bible, as the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. <coughs> we ought to do what the Bible tells us to do. You know, you can pray at home, that's for sure. But you can't, you can't fellowship with your brothers and sisters at home. You can't uphold one another if you're not there to do that. So we need to do what the Bible tells us to do. He tells us to do things for a reason. And let me tell you this, he knows a whole lot better than we do. We can't argue with it. It's in the Bible, don't try to argue with it. As we sing. Just as I am.
close in prayer, I just want to mention one thing. Here on these on this uh, announcements, now they got a thing at the bottom that says a uh, reminder of the floor donations are right about halfway. And, and you know what? Well, you think about that for a minute. Uh, that's uh, what over forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yes, it yeah. is. That's a lot of money. That's a big deal. Thank you all for everything that you've given, everything that you've done, and, uh, and may God richly bless you for that. Amen. I think that, and, and, and they've also paid some on the parking lot. I don't know yep. how much more is going to be on, on that, but that's a lot of money all told. Yep. A lot of money. Thank you. Thank you very kindly for it all. Go ahead and close us in prayer. The most kind and heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for a good service today, and we just ask you, Father, to go go out throughout the week with us, Father. Bless us, Father. Let us remember what we've heard today and learned today, Father. And just just let us get out and, and talk to people about your word, Father. Just take our shyness away and our fear of her. And Father, get, get Satan out of our out of our minds and our hearts, and just uh, just help Bless us in all we say and do. And Father, again, we'll ask you, if it be your will, all those prayers and concerns that you heard today, Father, if it be your will, we ask that you act on accordingly to your will. Yeah. And Father, if it be your will, give us safe passage to and from our home today, Father, and just uh, take care of us, love us, watch over us, and help us in all we say and do. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, Jeremy, can I see you just for a minute? You had Dexter here just for a minute. Yes.